Hi everybody, this is Sandra Angelo broadcasting live from Sandy and I just zoomed in and unloaded the groceries really quick and here I am with you broadcasting live and we're going to talk about some really cool stuff again like we usually do. It's, um, a, let's see, this is day nine. I think it's nine. Okay, so um, I am super excited tonight because I want to talk about what I did today and um, I went out to the ranch. My cousin has an alpaca ranch and um, I decided I was going to take her yarn dyeing class and this is because I you know I feel like in the winter I should wear bright clothes like I do all year round. There's no reason for me to put on brown and burgundy and black and all these ugly things so I try to look cheerful all year round and, and when you try to search for hats that are warm that are yellow it's impossible. So today I went out there to dye my own yellow hat and um, it, it didn't quite work out. I'm gonna dye the yellow hat later but I learned all about the dyeing process and it's just super super fun. It's so cool you can custom make you know, she showed me all these different ways that you can custom make the yarn so that it um, knits up or crochets up in the way that you want it to look. And uh, they just didn't, they were out of stock of the kind that I, of yarn that I use. I use um, Baby Alpaca with uh, silk in it because it's the softest yarn. It's super, super soft. And I'm kind of allergic to stuff, like I'm allergic to wool and pine needles that you decorate, you know, in the Christmas tree and stuff like that, so I have to be really careful. So I just helped her dye, dye her purple yarn, which apparently purple is the current color. So I got back from uh, that and I was completely out of groceries, so I had to stop on the way home so I don't starve tomorrow. So thanks for being patient and waiting. I see you're here, Shannon and Maria and Mary Ann and a lot of you. Betty's here. So a lot of you waited for me, so thanks a lot for waiting. I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, the weekends are not always exactly the way that we plan them. So why am I telling you about going to the ranch? What does that have to do with art? Well, I've talked about this before, but the fact of the matter is that if you don't live a life that's fascinating and fun and full of the people that you love and the things that you love, then you're going to end up drawing fruit. <laughs> you know, and I mean, there's probably some good paintings and drawings of fruit, but you know, it kind of leaves me cold. I just, yeah, it doesn't do anything for me. And so I like to um, create the memories that I want to inspire me so that when I sit down, I'm not only inspired, I have a stack of things in it it's hard to decide which of these amazing things to draw. And um, if you don't do that, you're going to have lackluster work and no matter, no amount of me teaching you which pencil to use, which paper to use, and all that stuff, none of it's going to do any good if you don't create a life that's inspiring because the life that is inspiring is what, you know, ends up being the really amazing art that then appeals to your customer or your patrons or your family because maybe they live that with you. So I sent out an email today talking about Michael and when he was a little boy um, he was just bonded to me for some reason ever since he was born we've just been buddies. And he was a little guy and you know little guys I love little ones because they love you they come running down the driveway and they're so happy to see you. Now I'm lucky if I can even find them when I go over there um, because, you know, things change when people are teenagers. But anyway, um, so I, uh, but we just built this bond and, and I was making a decision one morning. I fell asleep on the couch like I often do at the ranch because we watch a movie and then I always fall asleep in the middle of the movie. And so I woke up Monday morning with uh, Michael. He was three years old, just kind of pulling on my shirt and saying, Aunt Sandy, Aunt Sandy, can we go pick flowers? And I, it was Monday morning and I really should have been back at the office in the city. And I thought for a second and I thought, you know what? 
we're going to go plant flowers. And um, we trudged up the hill, and his grandmother was there, and so she joined us, and Josh joined us, and we they have a really steep driveway, so we went running up the, well, <laughs> they went running, I walked, um, and we picked yellow flowers and purple flowers and daisies and all these kinds of things and the kids would come running back to me with the flowers and I would keep the bouquet for them and I taught them that yellow is the opposite of um, purple and so that's why we should put the yellow flowers with the purple and I think Caleb was with us too and when we got back down to the house they were all in hushed tones and they said let's make a bouquet for grandma and one for mom, and then one for you, Aunt Sandy, and um, and then Michael made one for himself. <laughs> and so Caleb yeah, was our decoy, and he went in the front door. I think he was probably maybe seven years old, and um, or, or no, he was probably he was he might have been five or seven. Anyway, uh, Michael was three. So then while he was the decoy and went in the front, we snuck around the back through the laundry room and went into his room with nobody seeing us with our bouquets of flowers. And so we sat there and we sorted them and JJ guarded the door so that no one would come in and it was like being in the boys clubhouse, you know. And pretty soon he got it all done and he toddled out to his grandmother and said, Grandma, Grandma, here's flowers for you. And then, Mama, Mama, here's flowers for you. And, you know, I, as I was driving back to the office later that day, I kind of just occurred, it just occurred to me that I was investing. You know, that I had spent that time away from the office to be with Michael to just do what he wanted to do because he was only going to be three for a little while. And um, now he's six foot three and a big like football player guy and um, during the flood when I had to move out he called me up one night and he said you want to go out for a gourmet meal I mean here's an 18 year old boy calling his aunt to go out you know for this gourmet meal because his girlfriend was a chef at this gourmet restaurant and he wanted he picked me to go along and so I was going through this really rough time, rough period with the flood and everything. And my investment came back to me in spades. And then the other day I took him on a boat ride and we went all over the bay. And when we came home, he fixed my curtains for me. And, um, you know, every time I see him, he hugs me and he wants to be with me. And, and he and his girlfriend and I will go out together. And, you know, that's... That's what you want to put on your canvas. That's what you want to put on your drawing paper. In fact, I drew a picture of him when he was little with the flower bouquet. I'll see if I can find it and put it up in a minute. And I've drawn a picture of him when he was helping me blow my birthday candles out. I think I was 40 at the time. <laughs> That's a lot of candles. So I needed help. So he was <gasps> like this, helping me blow the candles out. And we've just grown up together, you know, and um, it's, it's a, it, if you are living an exciting, satisfying life, then your art is just a mirror, you know, it's just a mirror that's held up to your life, and if you have a good life, you're going to have a good heart, you're going to be inspired, it's like, you know, people who write music, or people who write screenplays, or pre people who write novels, or people who draw, or people who dance, or people who, you know, go in the theater. The, the creative stuff that you come up with is all a mirror. It's a mirror that's being held up to your life. I think country music singers have really hard lives because it's all about, she left me and broke my heart, achy, achy breaky heart. Um, but it's just what happens. And so... If you want to have good art, <clears throat> you need a good life. And I was really busy today. I was completely out of groceries. I mean, I had bean soup for breakfast because that's all I had in the house. And, um, but, and I, I'm really busy right now preparing Pencil Drawing College. I have a bunch of videos to produce and on and on. 
But you know what? I took the morning off. In fact, I ended up staying there in the afternoon, which is why I ran a little late tonight, because my cousin wanted to talk, and I just knew it was important. You know, and Michael was there. I gave him his birthday present early, and John Paul's going to be 14 on Wednesday. And so we spent some time together, too. And, you know, these are the... These are the things that inspire your work. You know, Monet planted the garden, if you've ever been to Giverny. He planted the paintings that he wanted to paint. He put the flowers in a certain place. You know, he had a little Japanese bridge and he had this boat that he, you know, he would go in his boat and paint. I got to see the boat last a couple summers ago. And so... Um, you need to orchestrate the life that you want to live and then that life is going to spill onto your canvas and onto your paper and that's what's going to give you inspiration. Somebody posted a question about where do I get my inspiration and so that's what prompted tonight's um, broadcast. So that's our motivational speech. Pay, um, plant the life you want to live. Plant seeds that you will reap later and it's all going to spill into your life and when you do that you're going to reap the rewards by being inspired and the thing that's really cool here's one of my tips for tonight is I take millions of pictures because it literally takes a ton of pictures to get it right especially in our family because we're huge when we walk into a theater, there's a minimum of, a, of 12 of us because there's 11 of them and then there's me. And so we walk in and it's like a tribe <laughs> walked in, you know. And so when, if you're trying to take a picture of a tribe and find one picture where nobody's eyes are closed, you know, if you, you just have to shoot, 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 shoot. And now with digital, uh, some of us are old enough to remember film that costs money. And so we were hesitant to take a lot of pictures and maybe we still have that mindset. But the reality is that with digital, I mean, I was at Walmart just a few minutes ago trying to get um, kitty litter. And, and um, I saw at the checkout stand, I think it was like eleven ninety seven for 30 gigabytes, gigabytes for a memory card for my camera. I mean, you can just shoot, shoot, shoot. Just delete the ones that don't turn out. And there are also, um, most cameras and most phones also have um, what's called a rapid fire um, button. And um, in the camera, you usually have to dig for it and figure out where it is. But in the, a lot of the phones, if you just hold your finger down, it'll keep shooting. So it's almost like it's um, a still sequence that looks like a movie. The only thing is it's a lot of shots to go through and there's very little, you know, change from shot to shot. So sometimes I just do like this. I just keep punching it, you know, so that I'm getting a little bit of space in between. So it's not exactly like the picture that I just took. And so especially when you're shooting children and animals, you have to shoot, shoot, shoot because they move <laughs> constantly. And so to get a really good shot, you've got to, you know, take a lot of pictures and you also need to put them in an environment that is comfortable for them. So you don't dress a kid up and comb his hair and stick him in front of the camera and then go, smile. He might go, well, that's, that's too nice. Let's see. <laughs> you know, they, they, you need to catch them doing, being a kid. And um, that's another reason that it takes so many. Uh, sometimes you can take a movie of the kid and then do a still frame from a steal a still frame from the movie. Or sometimes you can just you know use that rapid shutter um, as well. And uh, especially with dogs and cats and and uh, any animal and children and even adults can move around a lot too. So. Shoot, 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 shoot. But the most important thing is go make the memories. Take time off. I didn't have time to do this today. That's why I was running a little late because I had so much on my list of things to do today. But you know, I won't remember what's on that list. 
but I won't forget the conversation that I had today with my cousin Barbara. She had time to talk after the yarn dyeing class was over. She had one client coming out for an open house to see the mill. And then after that, we had time to have lunch together and talk together. And I wasn't going to pass it up. You know, and Michael wandered into the room. Becky wandered in. JJ wandered in. Um, and JJ's got a new job. He's selling knives now. So I bought a couple knives from him. And, you know, that just boosted his confidence because I was the second client that he had showed them to. His parents were the first. And, you know, they already had so many knives they couldn't buy anymore. But I bought a couple of knives just to encourage him, you know. And he was just so excited that I bought something because he's very new and wobbly <laughs> at his sales presentation, but he's trying his best. So I'm building these memories with these kids and I'm investing in them. And I invest in them one at a time. So I don't always take all of them. You know, when I go places, like on their birthday, I'll take them by themselves to go someplace to do something. Um, like I took JJ to the Midway. There's a really wonderful old ship that is a Navy ship. I'm probably calling it the wrong thing, but it's a huge boat. And um, it's become a museum. And so I took JJ there by himself on his to celebrate his birthday. And then um, Michael and I both like watching um, 24. It's so suspenseful. I'm usually not a big fan of anything where they're shooting, but 24 is, keeps you on the edge of your seat. So we fixed a great big huge pot of shepherd's pie and he just enjoyed so much going to the grocery store with me, picking the stuff. I taught him how to cook it because I have a special recipe that's really yummy. And we made this great big casserole. I thought it would last me a week. <laughs> He lasted me one, well, one and a half days because Michael was here. And uh, so we just binged on shepherd's pie. Hi, sweetheart. And um, we, we binged on 24. We literally watched, like, I think it was 16 or 18 episodes in a row. Just all cuddled up in our big blankets. And I had um, really good treats like kettle corn and cookies and all these things and we just Michael and I just built that memory together I think he was 12 years old and so then JJ wasn't old enough to watch that because they the parents are very smart and they make sure that kids that the kids watch age-appropriate things and so then he just couldn't wait till he was old enough to come over and watch 24 with me and so I build these individual memories with each of the kids and um it just makes for such a special relationship with them and then even when they grow up and they get to be six foot three and um, you know they're they're theoretically I mean what 18 year old boy would you know seek out his aunt that's my age <laughs> it doesn't normally happen but I've invested so much in these kids that they really love me and they love hanging out with me and I also do, um, I have to keep changing what I do with them. Like, you know, 24 was great when he was 12, but then when he was 14, he, <laughs> he wanted different things. So we went to this racetrack and um, he, wanted, <laughs> he wanted to invite his friend. Now, I don't know, obviously he's not heard the song Little Old Lady from Pasadena because we can go, Granny, go, Granny, go, Granny, go. You know, but he wanted his friend to come with him. So his friend came and brought his dad. And we all, you know, went to this race car thing and, and raced each other. And <laughs> it was fun. We built a good memory. And so the thing is, you own the pen that writes your life story. And so you can make it any kind of story that you want it to be. And um, if you're saying that you have a boring life or you have a bad life, guess whose fault that is? You're the one who wrote the story, you know. So um, I do want to say that no matter how well you write your story, sometimes you get a little interference from up above or the world around you or whatever, and, you know, uh, things can go wrong. And I was reading about that in, today in this book called Wake Up to Hope. And I'll just read you this really cool verse. It says, 
When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So this is kind of appropriate when I was going through the flood. And the guy, uh, Joel Olstein writes these, and he was just talking about that when, um, it, it's like a parent with a child. If someone or something is giving me a hard time, uh, giving my child a hard time, I don't think twice. I stop what I'm doing and I immediately go help them. And that's the way it is with our Heavenly Father. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, God steps up and says, Hey, wait a minute. Do you know who you're messing with? That's my kid. And so he comes against the enemy. And um, you have to realize that in tough times you're not alone. You always have somebody fighting for you. So even if you are writing your life script, things are going to go wrong. <laughs> you know, I can't even remember the last time that I ever ended up on plan A. You know, I mean, it's almost always plan B or C or D <laughs> or F or G or H. Um, but a creative person can know how to, you know, make the, the next plan um, a, a good one. And then you can appeal to your father and say, hey, you watching, did you see what they just did to me? Could you go get them sick Guido after them? And uh, so remember that you get to write your life story. That's what makes for inspiration. Shoot, 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 shoot lots of pictures so that you have a lot to choose from. And then when you come back, I store my photos in a file, a digital file on my computer. And I have my phone is synced. It's an Android phone, so it's synced to Google Drive. So that Google Drive automatically backs up all my photos. And this is great in case your phone gets stolen. Um, and then I keep them. I, keep, I have drawers here where I keep the printed versions of photos that I'm working on. And so that way when I really finally have some time to draw, I don't have to sit here and think, well, what am I going to draw? I just go to my folder of all the stuff that I chose, and it's just a matter of which one I want to work on. And so you can waste a lot of time trying to figure out what to draw. Maybe you only have two or three hours drawing, and if you spend that whole time trying to figure out what you're going to do or sorting your photos, um, then you're going to have a problem. You're going to use up all the time that you would have been able to draw just trying to figure out what you're going to draw. So I always have, um, you know, I, I'm, I think I'm a hyperactive person. I'm pretty energetic. And so I usually have more than one project going on at once. And um, I, will, I will keep my, draw, my photos in there. And that, that if I, that's if I'm looking for a new project. And then I will keep my drawings over here. So I have this little box where I store my drawings. This little box with the horses on it. And I store my work in these archival sleeves because I don't want them to get damaged. And um, regular plastic can damage your paper. So we, we um, have these archival sleeves on sandrasfavoritestuff.com. But I store the um, photo reference. I'm going to be working on Peter, peanut butter. This is uh, one drawing that I'm working on. I went to a dog surfing contest in Del Mar that was super fun. And this dog was wearing a hot pink bikini. So right now I'm working on that dog. And um, I'm, uh, I'm going to put him on a surfboard. I'm doing him in black and white, and I think I'll do the bikini in pink and everything else in black and white, and then put him on a surfboard. So I've got the photo of him stuck in my plastic sleeve, and then I have the drawing that I'm working on. Yeah, it's backwards because we're in selfie mode. But anyway, so I'm working on the drawing, and I'm composing that. And so when I um, am ready to draw, I can just, you know, go to my sleeves and I can pull out things that I want to work on. I'm working on peanut butter, <laughs> our guest star every night, and I'm also drawing him in color. Peanut butter. <laughs> I'm drawing him in color too. So let's see. Peanut butter, look in the, look in the camera. Pose peanut butter. Here. <laughs> For once he doesn't want to look. Okay, there you go. <laughs> So anyway, 
Um, so I keep those in a plastic sleeve with the photo that I'm working on too. This is also peanut butter when he's sleeping in his bowl. He used to be tiny. He's huge now. And when he was tiny, he used to sleep in that little bowl on the dining room table. I fought them for so long when they were kittens. So you can't be on this. You can't be on that. You can't be... I finally gave up. And now the only counter they're not allowed on is the kitchen counter. <laughs> but that was a little bowl on this dining room table. So now when we eat on the dining room table, we always put a um, cloth down in placemats. Because... I don't know if you've ever tried to train a cat, but <laughs> not easy. So anyway, um, so the the in, the um, inspiration and the tips that I'm giving you tonight kind of go together because um, peanut butter, you need to move just a little bit. Thank you. Because um, I'm telling you that you need to live the life that you want to live and make it happen even if you don't have time like I didn't have time for to go out to the ranch today I didn't I'm out in the middle of creating this pencil drawing college and I have a lot to do peanut butter stuff and uh, but I made time to go out there um, to have some fun because I needed to relax and then I also um, stayed longer than I had planned to because I didn't want to miss that opportunity to see the kids, to buy knives from JJ to encourage him in his new job, and to get, I gave Michael his birthday present, which is coming in February, and I had a chance to talk with my cousin Barbara and, um, and Lindsay, and um, I got to say happy birthday to John Paul, and all those different things, and so, you know, you need to make the choices that make your life so amazing that it's inspiring and then shoot 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 keep your shots you know after you're done shooting the easiest thing to do is go through and just sort them and I always create a folder that I call best so when we went to the Grand Canyon last year our whole family went to the Grand Canyon in January and so I have a folder called the Grand Canyon and then I have a folder inside that that says best Grand Canyon so when I was finished with the trip, I sorted it and stuck all the best photos from the Grand Canyon into that. And then I printed out ones that I thought I might draw. And so then I, uh, when I'm ready, I go to this for something new. I go to this here to find a new photo. Peanut butter, stop. You're being a bad boy tonight. Um, and it's probably because I was gone all day, so he really needs attention. He's overdue for some snuggles. Um, and so, um, so then I stick them in that drawer, so when I have a new project, I have all the pictures picked out. And it's just easier if you do it as you go, you know, just when I straight came back from the Grand Canyon, I sorted the pictures. Made a folder called Best. Now I always know where the best ones are printed off the ones I might draw, stuck them in that drawer, they're in a waiting list of things to do. Once I get them, you know, the contour line drawing, peanut butter, stop it, you're going to get sent to the other room if you don't stop. Then they go into this course folder, and then when I, and so these are the works that are in progress right now. So these are... <laughs> He's trying to get inside the horse folder. You know, it's like a I, having a perpetual two-year-old. <laughs> I know you know if you're if you have a kitten. This is just an overgrown kitten that I'm living with here. Peanut butter, stop, stop. Okay, <laughs> that worked. Okay, so anyway, um, so. The, the motivational talk tonight was about how to live your life and the tips tonight were how to create those moments and then turn those moments into masterpieces and then how you, you know, get inspiration because a, a, a lot of work that I see is just a mugshot, you know, and it's just boring, you know, it's like everybody's drawn their dog's head, you know, or their kids head or you know there's just nothing exciting or inspiring about it 
when you're working with a kid, don't comb their hair. You know, just let them be a kid. If they've got mustard on the face, leave it. You know, um, dogs and cats and, and kids, they don't, they don't get dressed up. When you point a camera, they don't say, let me go get my lipstick. They just look at you, and they're just being kids. So let them be who they really are, and let, them, let it all hang out, and um, then capture that. Okay? So um, tomorrow I, is Sunday. It's my day of rest, and so I won't be here in the village. But I am going to do something really special for you. Tomorrow morning you're going to get an email with a link, and we have put all the workshops that you've had so far, all the sessions, are going to be on YouTube. So if you're like me, I love to binge watch. I work really, really, really hard, and then some days I just need to chill, you know, and I need to be in my PJs all day, and I need to just not answer the phone, turn the, turn the ringer off, and just you know, get away from everybody. And on days like that, I like to just make some really good food and get the kit kitties in here, and we all just curl up on my chair, and um, and then we'll binge watch. We'll binge watch something that I've been wanting to watch for a while. Um, I I just finished a series. I have a friend and I that we both um, are on Netflix, and so we're always telling each other these really good series that we like to watch. And so anyway, um, you can binge watch tomorrow. And when I'm binge watching, I usually will sit right here and I will draw. Because some of the stuff that I'm listening to, especially if it's historical or documentaries, I love documentaries. I love to learn things. I like the History Channel. And I like other things where I'm learning something. Or sometimes I'll even listen to a podcast. Like what I'm doing really doesn't need to be on a video. This What I'm doing today should be on a podcast. You could listen to this while you walk. You don't need to watch me unless you're infatuated with peanut butter. But because um, what I'm doing is talking and you can listen to that while you're doing something else. So you could just, you know, sit here and draw and listen to all the episodes. And that way you're kind of binge binge watching and we're going to send you a link to the YouTube channel. My new assistant just created it. And so we've, we're going to have these on a YouTube channel too. And if you have friends that aren't on Facebook that want to watch that too, you know, let them know about it. And uh, so we can, uh, you can spend Sunday. Here's my rule about Sunday. On Sunday, I'm allowed to do anything I want. I don't have to comb my hair. I don't have to get out of my PJs. I don't have to cook if I don't feel like it. I can order food in. You know, I can do all those things that I always said I don't have time to do them. On Sunday, I have time. So if I want to sew, if I want to draw, if I want to binge watch and draw, or if I want to go someplace with a friend, or you know, whatever I want to do, I'm allowed to do anything on Sunday. And so I have projects that I really want to draw that aren't on my list of things I need to draw for Pencil Drawing College. So on Sunday, I work on those. You know, there's things that don't fit into the curriculum that I'm teaching, but there are things I just love and I really want to draw them. And so on Sunday, I'll sit and do that. So if you can give yourself you know, a day of rest where you have permission. My mom taught me this. She, she, um, we had breakfast on Sunday and then she made a big pot roast and I think, I don't know if they had crock pots in those days. I think they had a pressure cooker. And, um, we would come home and the house would smell beautiful from the roast and the potatoes and the carrots and stuff like that. And then she told us, that's it. Sunday's my day off. And in Africa, we would give the, the servants Sunday off, too. And um, she taught me that you need to have a day. You know, I mean, God, when he created the heavens and the earth, he took one day off. And he told us to keep the Sabbath holy, so to rest, you know. And if you go to church on Saturday night, then the whole day on Sunday, you can just do whatever you want to do. And uh, it's, it's really awesome. So, 
Anyway, that's um, what I recommend you do tomorrow because we're not going to leave everything up forever. And so if you're behind in episodes, maybe you joined us kind of late and you're a little bit behind, you can just binge watch tomorrow. And uh, you need to train your family if you're a mom or a, a wife or a husband or whatever. You have to teach people and you have to set boundaries. You know, um, and, and it takes a while. <laughs> if your family is used to you always being available, you know, maybe you'll need to go someplace. Like, maybe you don't have good internet at home, so you go to Starbucks and take your art supplies and tell your family you'll be back in five hours. And then turn your phone off. Or don't take your phone. You know what? We lived for centuries with no phone in our pocket. You don't need to take the phone with you. It's just going to interrupt you. So go to Starbucks and sit there with your Wi-Fi and listen to me on your headset while you draw. Or I often will go to a really fancy hotel. I live in an area that's a very touristy, and so I have all these great hotels, the Hyatt and the Marriott, Embassy Suites, the Hilton, all within one or two blocks of me. And so I will often go to the lobby and I will find a, a distant spot that's not bothering anybody, just couches that no one's using, and I'll just sit there and draw. You know, and it's, it's almost like you're staying at that resort, you know, um, and it's just a really nice way, you know, to get away where people can't find you, <laughs> you know. Um, I always encourage people, you know, if you... If you work during the day, if you could train your family, if you're, they're used to you being home at 5.30, you could train them that you're not going to be home till 6.30, just stay at work and draw on your desk. Or, you know, maybe you could go to the lounge at, at where you work, or you could stop at a library on the way home, or stop at a hotel lobby on the way home and just make peanut butter stop. Just make yourself comfortable and... Siphon off that hour for yourself. You have to train your family. So if you're going to train them that Sunday is your day of rest. I've had to train the people in the art village. You know, they're always posting and asking me questions. And I'm like, I don't work on Sundays. Sorry. This is my day of rest. So I don't mind if they post in their group. But they, don't, they need to know I'm not going to answer them. And so um, you have to set boundaries. And you have to train people that being an artist is a valid profession. Um, when I first started my company, I had a lot of retired friends, and they would call me up and they wanted to go places during the week. And I said, I have a job. You know, they thought because I was working in a studio that I could just take off any time. And I said, I can be with you on the weekend, you know, like a Sunday, but right now I'm working, and, and it takes people a while to realize that you actually, you know, you're serious. And so you can teach people how to do that. So anyway, that's the way it's going to be tomorrow. And um, I will be gone because I will be having my day of rest doing whatever. Peanut butter, stop. He's just wound up right now. <laughs> It's because I was gone all day, and he's like a little two-year-old. It's like, Mommy, 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 Mommy. <laughs> Tugging on your skirt. Um, and so, anyway, um, I'm going to be gone tomorrow like usual, and then I will be back on Monday. And um, we're going to be having broadcast all the way through January 11th. So, uh, 7.30 and if I'm going to be a little late, I'll post. Just look at the top. Yeah, I'll always pin a post. When I pinned that post, I was at the grocery store because I knew I couldn't come home without food. I, I'm out of even the bean soup. I don't even have bean soup left. I had nothing in my house to eat this morning except bean soup. And I had to go to the grocery store. So I, te I posted that about 7.15 from the grocery store telling you it was going to be 8 o'clock. Because I knew I had to get all the way home, get my the valet to park my car, get the valet to bring my groceries up, and then I had to put them away. And so I knew it was going to be 8 o'clock before we got together. So, today's lesson, create the life that you want to draw. 
create the life that you want to paint. You own the pen that writes your life story. And if somebody interferes and adds a little drama to your story, which happens to me frequently, look up and say, Hey, Father, did you see that? Could you help me here? Please, 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 please. And so he will do that. And he'll give you uh, a better, maybe a better ending than the one that you had written for yourself. Then when you go and make these memories, shoot, 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 shoot. And then sort it right away. Create a folder that's called Best and Best Grand Canyon or Best yarn dyeing day or whatever and then print out the ones that you want to draw stick them in a drawer so that when you need something new you have things already chosen when you're in progress go ahead and stick them in a place where they're in the plastic sleeves so that you're protecting them and then the photo that you're working from is in the same sleeve and then um, that way it's all organized so that when because we all have really busy lives I mean our culture is just hyperactive. I mean, we, we have way too many options compared to the old days. Um, I saw this one lady. At, we, I went up to the, the Getty Art Museum, the one that's in the Italian villa in Los Angeles. And there was this little canvas about this big. And it was an elaborate painting. And it was painted with mosaic tiles. And this lady, they must have been from the South because it sounded like it, she says, well, look at that, would you ever? They, they painted that, they're painting with tiles. Now, that would just take a long time and a lot of imagination. And her friend, I guess it was Bertha, her friend Bertha says, well, look at the date, honey, they didn't have TV. <laughs> and that's what it's like. I mean, I grew up in a place where we didn't even have electricity. And um, we didn't have running water. We lived in the jungle. And so we did all kinds of creative and imaginative things. And sometimes we just have too much coming at us, you know, checking the phone, checking Facebook, checking Twitter, checking Instagram, you know, uh, keeping in, uh, checking for messages, checking Facebook, you know. And we don't just sit down and just chill out, you know, and relax and enjoy savoring life. Um, at the yarn dyeing class today at the alpaca ranch, one of the ladies there was there with her daughter from college and they were building a memory together. They were dyeing yarn together and they're going to go home and make hats, matching hats and they're, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to get away. You know, just get away from the interference and all of that. And if you're still hyperactive like me, you can put you know, put something on TV or listen to books on tape or, you know, binge watch on my YouTube channel and things like that. And so, um, let's see, somebody's saying, Carol Mitchell is saying, Kindle is saying, uh, thanks for the YouTube videos. I can't always stay for the full lesson. So the time difference. Yes, Carol, and not only that, but you have access to these, these are recorded and so even here on Facebook you can come and binge watch on Facebook too sometimes it's just a little easier to do it on YouTube because YouTube is a little more intuitive than Facebook but if you are on a computer on a Sa in Sandyland on the top left hand side there it says discussion photos, videos and all that you just click on videos and you can binge watch all the episodes or you can go to YouTube and binge watch it. So, um, but we did this partly because we have a few people on our list, quite a few people on our list that still haven't joined Facebook. And so, um, and they've been writing and saying, I really want to see your lessons. Is there any other place? And I thought, well, you know, let's put it on YouTube. So we're going to uh, put it up there for you. And you'll be getting a link in your email tomorrow. Now, if you haven't signed up at PencilDrawingCollege.com, you aren't on our list. So you're not going to be getting all these emails. So you need to go to PencilDrawingCollege.com and sign up to be notified of everything that we're doing. And we're sending emails every day telling you what's coming next and 
giving you links and when we finally do open pencil draw, drawing college there's just a few spaces available um, you're going to get that by email and so and it always sells out because we keep it small because I'm actually giving you one-on-one -on -one attention and critiques and I can't do that for hundreds of people so we keep it really small and when we open it up it, it usually sometimes it stays open for a few hours and sometimes a few days but um, when you get that email saying that it's open you want to go in there and grab your spot because we tend to sell out really fast and um, and then like I said we don't open we only do stuff like once a year because once um, I get everybody enrolled then my whole energy is spent on helping them grow as an artist that's where I spend all my time and I don't want to spend time out there enrolling people and all that stuff okay there's a couple more questions that I've got the wrong glasses on so hang on I'm gonna get some better glasses hang on okay I've got my little reading glasses now so I'm gonna put these in my bright green reading glasses and let's see um, it says Regina says I just watched a CNN special on Korea yeah I know North Korea their life is so simplistic compared to ours and others not that I want to live in North Korea but I was like wow I wish Oh, I don't want to turn this off. I can't see the rest of it, but I'll comment on it after this is over. Patricia um, says, Hi, Sandra. I'm enjoying all the videos, learning a lot. Glad you got to take a day to chill and have some fun. Thank you, Patricia. I appreciate the, um, the permission. Sometimes I feel like I need to be here all the time, but I do a better job when I take time to take care of myself. It's like um, they say on the airplane, they say, put your own mask on first and then you can help others around you and so uh, it's really important for you to take care of yourself and even when you don't have time <laughs> you know like I really really did not have time to do this this week not at all but I made it I made time and um, I can't wait until they get the, the yarn in that I can dye and I can get my yellow hat I think it was Mickey that asked me because I was holding up the yarn in the picture and I was holding up the purple that's the yarn that my cousin did and so um, I didn't get to do my own yarn today because they didn't have the kind that I'm not allergic to and so that's going to be coming in soon and so I'll get to go out there and make my own yellow yarn and then I'm going to make my yellow hat and maybe I'll wear it on the broadcast it's super fun okay now let me just look put on these Screaming green glasses there. <laughs> Makes me look like a frog. And see if there's any more comments. Uh, let's see here. Hotel office. Yeah, Maria, that's a really good way to go. Maya appreciates the YouTube. Thanks for the gratitude. Yeah, Maria's coloring right now while she's listening. That's good. Yeah, you don't really need to, you know, be focused on the the screen. I probably should do this in podcasts, but I don't know. I kind of think videos are cool, too. I take so many pictures, I had to get a third external hard drive, Levana. I'm with you. I have so many photos. I have a huge backup system. And uh, when we go into pencil drawing college and stuff like that, we give you links to all those resources that give you backup and stuff. Van Gogh and the others traveled to get good scenes. Uh, yeah, uh, Gauguin went to Tahiti, and um, and uh, Van Gogh went to places in France. And it was really fun when I was in France a couple of years ago. You could see these big haystacks, just like Monet had painted, and you could see the Rouen Cathedral. We got to see the poppy fields where you know Monet painted the people and the places that he vacationed and it's just fun to go back and see the places that are in all their canvases so it looks like that's all the comments so so that's your lesson for tonight super happy thanks for waiting for me sorry it's a little late needed that extra time so thanks for hanging in there and 
Whenever you can't watch live, don't worry, it's recorded here on Facebook under videos. You do <clears throat> on the tablet and the phone. It doesn't put that up there at the top. It's kind of annoying. You can't really find the videos very easily on a tablet <clears throat> or a phone. So go to a computer and in the top left hand corner you'll say discussion and members and photos and videos. So click on videos and that's you can watch all the sessions. We're at session 9 now. And uh, then, like I said, we put them on the YouTube channel. So if you have signed up to be on our list at PencilDrawingCollege.com, then you're going to get a, an email tomorrow morning that says, click here, go watch, binge watch on YouTube. And that would be a great way to spend your Sunday, just sitting there drawing. And um, then you'll get a chance to feed your brain while you're doing your artwork. I, I really, you know, I, I guess I am... I am a hyperactive person. I, I'm a multitasker. So I always feel good when I can accomplish two things at once. And so I like to learn. And so putting things on that, you know, motivate me or that make me grow and, and things like that is are really good. And if you have a tablet, I mean, me, I can't really show this to you because my tablet is on the tablet holder. But I have a little tablet holder right in front of me right now. And you could put your tablet on a little holder in front of you, and then that way when you're drawing, you can just look up if you hear me say something where you can tell you need to see what I'm talking about. You know, then you can just look up and look at the tablet and, and just draw and listen to me because I'm it's it's in the video business we call it a talking head. <laughs> and so I'm doing is talking pretty much. You know, today sometimes I go over to the computer and show you stuff. But um you know, most of the time we're, uh, I'm just talking. So, anyway, that's what we have for tonight. I have loved being with you, as usual. It's one of my favorite part of the day. We really rush home and get excited about being with you again. It's just so fun to be with people who are like you, you know. That was what was fun today in the yarn dyeing class. Everybody in the class wanted to make really exciting colors. And I, I was just like, this is so cool because I love color. And I just... Gray and uh, beige don't do it for me. And so it was really fun to be with people who liked color and who were splashing the colors on their yarn and making these really beautiful pieces. And it's just fun to hang out with people who are like you. You know, it, I call it a tribe. When you find your tribe, it's so awesome because you finally belong. You know, I know when I first came to America, I had the worst time belonging because I'm so different and I grew up in a different country and I just thought different and acted different and it took quite a while for me to find a tribe where I really fit and so uh, if you're in our art village and, and you're you know what I'm saying to you kind of echoes in your heart and in your brain you love to spend time with family too and you like to turn those moments into masterpieces and you know you love kitties obviously if you love kitties you're putting up with peanut butter <laughs> And uh, so it's just fun to find people where you have all that in common. And <clears throat> when you talk, you hear an echo instead of people just staring at you like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, so that's it for today. And um, I just always end by saying I hope that you will learn to be your very best because here in the Art Village, we always go for the gold. And we always remember that there will be miracles. I have it backwards. <laughs> there will be miracles. I'll see you tomorrow.